Anyway, a little about myself before I get started. Um, I am a fifth year PhD in composition rhetoric. My research focus lies in writing pedagogy, specifically the as of now unwritten shared transatlantic history of British and American writing studies. I've been teaching since 2013, first in California and then here since 2016. In my time here, I've been instructor of record for English 101, English 102 and English 463. I absolutely love the variety of teaching, but my heart will always lie in English 102, as I love helping freshmen adapt to college writing and giving them a chance to explore arguments that mean a lot to them personally. I spent the last two academic years as assistant director for 102, during which time I co-edited two editions of our textbook, the Carolina Rhetoric, and got to help shape how the course looked for that time. More importantly, for our purposes today, I was still AD when everything collapsed. Also, this may come as a huge shock to people but I'm one of those foreign people that you hear about sometimes. Um, I'm an international student from Essex in England, so hi. Um, I'm always looking for ways for students to bring personal passions into the class, and extra credit has become a core way to share this, especially now that I'm become an online instructor. I will be keeping an eye on the chat, so if folks have like anything they would like to ask immediately that y'all are like, God damn it, I just have to ask this now. Just ask away and I'll try and answer things as we go along. Anyway, to properly get started. Um, the learning objectives of today center around two different assignments. First, an extra credit opportunity that helps build community in the online classroom, whilst providing students with a fun break from their normal work. This will be the main focus of our session, as I feel it's an aspect of education that doesn't honestly get talked about enough. I'll explain where I, why I started this extra credit, what it actually is, what other options people have to do, and what folks have been doing with it in the last two semesters. But that's not all, folks. I also want to introduce you all to a second assignment, a check-in to give students a space to informally chat about their week while simultaneously reminding them that the instructor is there for support. I won't spend much time on this check-in, but I believe it's the other side of the extra credit coin when considering how to make our students' lives feel as normal as possible in this most abnormal of times. It is therefore my belief that these can be adapted to any subject, but as I'll talk at the end of this presentation, not a direct one-on-one -on -one adaptation. Anyway, why extra credit? So a fun discovery that I only recently made. The Ides of March this year were on the 15th of March. We went online on the 23rd of March. And I just feel that brings a whole new meaning to the good old beware the Ides of March. When I explained this true and accurate fact to my students, they just glared at me and were like, stop, stop. Um, as I've said, I was working as assistant director for English 102 when COVID hit us. Typically, our duties involve helping plan out the standard syllabus that all teachers are supposed to follow. But we do that over a few months as opposed to a few weeks. When the shift happened in March, we initially had around one week to get all 50 plus sections of 102 online. These materials had to be consistent with what had happened normally, be simple enough that students could understand them, but not be so busy work related that it just caused them frustration. They had to still be engaged in our classes, obviously. More importantly, they had to be instructor proof. As you quickly find out when writing standardized materials, a lot of instructors need a whole lot more help than most students do. That's not to knock these instructors, it's just something that one has to get used to. More than anything, I had to help students not feel lost. Had to offer them a sense of continuity in their lives. It felt to me like a lot of folks forgot that we're ultimately working with children who are very scared. Especially those of us who explicitly work with freshmen, we're working with 17 year olds and 18 year olds. And I mean it with full respect, but they are still children. They are not full adults and we have to be there for them. So I wanted to create these materials in a way that could be there for them. I also want to give a very brief shout out to the other ADs for the work they were doing at the time. This was very much a team-based job and the general 101 and 102 emails from spring seemed to imply that we kind of rocked it, which is actually very satisfying. Once this was done, I wanted to then adapt these larger materials to my own class to make it still feel very me-centered. Or me-ish, I guess, not me-centered. Um, coincidentally, my students had actually had an extra credit opportunity over spring break. 
It was something to do with reviewing one of the best films of the last decade and selling to the class why it's one of the best films of the last decade. So it made sense to me to offer an extra week of it to keep them entertained when we had the extra week of break. Initially, this was only supposed to be a two week long extra credit opportunity, but so many students did it and then said, hey, can we do some one hour online? I was like, yeah, we're only gonna be online for two weeks, why not? When we shifted online for the entire semester, it seemed a bit wrong and unfair to not just continue until the end. Ultimately, giving students something actually fun was vital to me. We couldn't just ignore the typical classwork they have to complete, and few students, sadly, think that writing a 3,000 word paper is thrilling. So we wanted to give them something that could take their minds off the sheer absurd awfulness of 2020. This also led to creating the weekly check-ins, more on that a bit later. But in short, I needed to give students a space for a mental health break. Anyway, so moving on. What you see right now is what a typical week's extra credit looks like. So just read this for y'all. As promised, extra credit returns this week. As there are no cultural milestones to consider, at the time of writing at least, I'll update this if this changes, we have another opportunity to review something. The only limitation here is that it can, can't be the same type of source as your previous review, if you indeed submitted one. So, if you reviewed a lovely cake recipe last week, you need to now review a film, TV show, album, or whatever else takes your fancy, so long as it isn't a recipe. Things consider, keep it around a page, why did you choose this source, would you recommend it to other folks, what cultural impact did it have, and where can you find it? I've tried to keep this as simple as possible without being so basic that someone could just complete it in a matter of minutes or seconds. The general idea last semester was to always require a different type of thing to be reviewed. But now that we have an entire semester to play around with these, I'm a lot more open for repeats. That said, we're currently week, eight weeks in and I've had students who've completed this every single week and no one has submitted the same genre mode or whatever you want to call it twice which I actually think is very exciting. Instead of just saying, yay, this is some extra points that go towards the end of your semester, I track every submission and assign it to any missing credit, no credit work from any point of the semester. If, for example, students have completed every discussion post and every weekly check-in, it will then help post, uh, boost the lowest grade of their ILP, an assignment we do in one or two. Then, if they don't need boosting, it will finally become a traditional little bump at the end. I found that if students have a tangible way to make up for smaller missed assignments, it A, helps them feel less stressed, and B, then makes it a lot easier to offer extensions on major assignments, as no one needs to ask them for weekly stuff. Last semester, there was a notable jump in grades from people who really struggled to shift to online, which honestly was a lot of people and thus found it hard to keep up with the never-ending pace that online offers. But they still took the extra credit opportunities. They all, without fail, ended up with the same grade or higher than they would have received if literally nothing had happened in March and we just stayed face-to-face -face the entire semester. In other words, because of folks taking advantage of extra credit, I didn't need to even consider giving someone a lower grade than they could have achieved in a normal semester, and I honestly didn't have to consider bumping anyone's grade at all. It was honestly fantastic. The cultural impact question has led to some genuinely hilarious answers. Someone literally last week tried explaining the cultural impact the state of Mississippi has had on the world. They failed really, really, really badly, but they tried. Equally, a student reviewed WAP, and in thinking about the cultural impact, realized she wanted to shift her research topic. She's now moved from a paper researching climate change to one that argues that A, WAP is indeed a feminist masterpiece, and as such, B is the perfect entrance way to argue against the double standards of sexuality and how fragile masculinity really is. It utterly, utterly rocks and is why I love teaching classes like this. But she would not have made the shift had she not done the extra credit, which I think is cool. The reason I ask students where their source was found is so I can add to an ever-evolving list on a blackboard. Initially, I thought students would see this list and go, oh, look, the old man did something. Good for him. But almost every single week I do an update, someone will then review a source that was added. In any other scenario, this would hypothetically feel a bit like cheating, but the literal entire point of this extra credit 
outside of the aforementioned provision of fun and this utter hellscape we live in, is to get people sharing what they love and therefore for new folks to try it. There are, however, alternative weeks. I try to come up with as many alternatives as possible to keep things interesting for my students. Even the most funnest of assignments get old when they're repeated week after week after week. So just to run you through the ones we've got this semester so far. The study abroad fair. My spouse is a person, and if you watched her and Magdalena's session earlier, hi, that's my spouse. Um, I strongly believe in study abroad for reasons no one could ever guess. So it made sense to give this as an option. For this particular week then, those who attended the fair asked to review accessibility of everything and if it was helpful for their decision to study abroad. For those who couldn't attend the fair, however, I asked them to sell me the best location they had ever been in their lives. This could be literally anywhere in the world, including SC, and if any of them felt that way, even the lovely city of Columbia. No one said Columbia. I didn't want to gatekeep with any foreign shenanigans because the entire point of the test credit is to keep it as open as humanly possible for everyone involved. For game day, students were asked to review the game itself and how COVID precautions changed how the game was received. I'm sure people can imagine how that review went. For the debate last week, it was just a nice simple rhetorical review of the tactics used by both sides. I absolutely adore, however, that having this option, A, encourage one of my students to actually watch the debate, which she wasn't going to do, and then B, immediately register for an absentee ballot because she was so utterly horrified by what she watched. It wasn't something I intended to happen with this, but what do we ever really intend in academia? For how a week, they can either A, send me a photo of themselves wearing a very spooky costume, or B, submit a review of a spooky film. While we're meeting in person that particular week, I always give extra credit for anyone who actually comes to class in costume. To make this fair, I always go to myself as well. So this year, I will either be Professor Aquaman or a professor to not make people feel out of place. And I record my lecture. That is how it will be recorded. For election day, students can either submit a photo of themselves with an I voted sticker, or they can do a review of their experience at the polling station, or their review of absentee voting if they so desire. And Thanksgiving, they have a chance to create a multimodal argument for or against actually celebrating Thanksgiving as time off every year. If anyone watching today has any other suggestions for alternative weeks, I would absolutely love to hear them. So please let me know in the comments either now or when we get to the end of this, because I really do want to make this as open for students as possible. Moving on. It's just a very basic graph chart table. Um, of what students have done over last semester and over this semester. They have done far, far more than this, but I wanted to basically have equal weighted columns. The singular most popular thing for people to review is TV shows. There is no week that goes past without someone reviewing a TV show, but this is very closely followed by recipes, which I think is very cool. That said, a lot of folks also review stuff that isn't actually included on this um, table that you can see including a lot of music reviews and a few book reviews. One student this semester is actually slowly reviewing every single aspect of a single album, from the entire album to cover art to an individual song by the album. What I also really enjoy about this is that it can lead to an explosion of folks watching stuff. For Ozark, Too Hot to Handle and Tiger King, all last semester, they all began with one person reviewing and within one week of it being posted that someone reviewed it, almost the entire class was reviewing all three of them. It honestly felt like watching the show go viral in real time just within the confines of our class was really just cool. And then with other options. As I've already said, the review of the state of Mississippi may be my favorite thing I've ever seen someone review in my career as a teacher. I wouldn't say it was misguided, it was just an utter stretch of how one can actually review something, and it was fantastic. But my singular favourite thing, possibly someone's reviewed, they just reviewed a nice stroll they'd had that day. It wasn't reviewing what they did on the stroll, it was just reviewing the weather outside and everything, and again, it just gave them a place to talk about it. The other aspect of this, though, and this is not extra credit, is the weekly check-in. This is what I think of as the true mental health aspect of my class. 
I believe it is very important to know how our students are doing and to give them a space to vent. These check-ins are 100% private submissions that no other student will ever know about. I want to give students a real personal space to talk about how life is going without fearing that their peers will be like, wow, you have a hard time, boo-hoo. Because that's just honestly not fair. Everyone's having a hard time right now. Back in face-to-face -face teaching, I would begin every single class with five minutes of checking in with a group. So in a way, this has taken place of that. The one that you can currently actually see on the screen, assuming I pulled it up, I did, is very specifically the one that is for this week and is what my students will be submitting sometime in the next 10 or so hours. These change a little bit week in, week out, but the general idea is to see how things are going in my students' lives. The only two questions then that are always there without fail. First, how's your week gone? Is there anything you want to brag and or vent about? Whilst yes, these are places to vent, and students vent a lot. Students should also have a place to act, talk about the goodness in their lives. And I'll talk about some of this in a little bit. The other question that always remains is, do you have any questions about anything else? Some students have taken this not to mean, yes, professor, I don't understand this about the paper. And instead, professor, I want to ask you a random question about your week, such as, hi, professor, my random question is, what sandwich did you eat today? This in no way was the intent whatsoever, but I truly, utterly adore it, and it's genuinely helping me feel like I have a greater connection to my students. These check-ins are required, but they're completely credit, no credit. There is no word limit, there's no page limit. It's write as much as you want. Some students write a couple of sentences, some students write a couple of pages. It's what they need that week. These are ultimately for them. If a student comes to office hours in that particular week, it also takes care of doing this check-in because we're talking about these things face-to-face -face anyway. Some students have used these to work through personal problems. Because these are such private conversations, I will not talk about them here, but there have been some powerful things they've talked about. This has also led to me seeing the reality of USC's response to COVID. Multiple students have written about wanting tests that are being refused. Others have been forced to quarantine elsewhere, being told that it won't add to campus numbers. Even those quarantining on campus have had very enlightening stories to tell about the conditions of the rooms they're kept in. Again, I will not mention specifics for obvious reasons, but opens my eyes as their instructors to the reality of being a freshman in term of fall 2020. In happier news, however, this has also led to ongoing conversations with students. One student has turned this into a weekly conversation about the video games we're both playing. He tries telling me each week, The Last of Us Volume Part 2, Part 2, it's a terrible, terrible game. He is potentially correct. Another has been using this to get suggestions for running routes around Cola, and then each week we'll report back on whether or not she likes the new routes. First of all, though, are the pet updates, y'all. I have a few students that every single week, without, semester, without question, will send me a photo of their cat or dog in this. These always get replied to a photo of my dog, and it just continues and continues and continues. In a mid-semester survey, which I'd love to talk about more, but annoyingly isn't due for two days' time because I didn't know I was doing October best when I first told them to do it, everyone has responded so far has said how much they love these check-ins. To quote one student, who shall remain anonymous, I love that you're doing these weekly check-ins during this super stressful time. I have, and I'm sure my classmates as well, have felt so much support for you already, and it's really refreshing and quite honestly needed to be given a place to talk. Folks have also told me this is the one space that they feel like they can be truly heard in their classes. I truly see this less as praise about the assignments or my class, more of an indictment on the reality of classes across campus as a whole. For a final slide then, When I teach face-to-face, -face, every single class begins with me playing music as students come into class. When they're working class, there is music. It's a very music-oriented class. I wanted to keep that up with shifting to online. As such, every single week has a dedicated album that's posted to Blackboard that students are encouraged to listen to. Some are for very specific reasons. America 4 was on our week discussing genre crossover and how you can remix ideas into your own. Demon Days is on Halloween week, because it has a spooky title. Rage Against the Machine is on election week, for entirely mysterious reasons. My favourite album, possibly of all time, is on my birthday week, 
I'm not going to say what album it is, but my students now get to listen to it too. To my surprise, at least one student will reference the weekly album in every single week's check-in. Some have thanked me for introducing them to new music, which is honestly really chill. Others have then suggested albums for me to listen to based off of my weekly pick. And those albums are then sometimes being sent back to other students who I think would like them. I also send a different song link with every single email I send. For example, I sent an email about 20 minutes for this, and now my students are getting jailed on the floor, possibly the greatest running song of all time. I believe that even serious emails should have a sense of levity in them, or else students have no reason to want to read. After a student asked, I now compile all email music as part of the ever-expanding extra credit list on Blackboard, and again, I've had positive feedback from students viewing that for them. This music never has an assignment attached to it. It's just another small way to create a sense of community within the class. Thank you. As current teaching reality isn't going away anytime soon, it just isn't, no matter what anyone says. As such, it's important for each of us to consider ways to offer students a sense of normal class community as they continue to move for a very, very unnormal education experience. For my class, extra credit, check-ins, music, and other small personal touches are how I create that. And it's been very popular with students, and if anything, I'm just going to double down on it. I'm not ultimately saying, however, that all classes should be using these specific assignments. Honestly, all of y'all watching this might be like, no way in hell would I use any of these. Instead, I'm just saying that everyone needs to be considering ways to help our students through this unprecedented time in their lives. If that means creating new assignments you wouldn't have had otherwise, I think it's truly something very important and is how we're going to help our students. And that's that. And thank you for listening.